Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> And we hope you're joining us live on Facebook, and, uh, and uh, what a great uh, Easter service that was last week, and the sunrise service. We've had uh, so many people reach out and contact us about that, uh, and about the Easter service that we live stream. Just a, a great, great way to connect. This is all new to me, so uh, uh, you got to bear with the old redneck preacher who is not technical technologically uh, yeah I, I, wanna, I don't want to hurt myself this morning yes yes I, uh, I am I'm, as you can see I'm uh, hamstringed in a lot of different ways but uh, what a good time it was last week and so uh, thanks for joining us again this morning and uh, just a few in-house items that we always take care of I do know that there is an anniversary there's at least one and so I'm going to give a shout out to Jason and Amy Platt, who had an anniversary this week. And so happy anniversary, uh, Amy and Jason. And uh, I hope that uh, you had fun doing whatever you could do during a coronavirus <laughs> pandemic lockdown. Uh, so uh, any other uh, anniversaries or birthdays we know about? Vicki and Mary Ellen had birthdays, so happy birthday. So uh, we will, we'll go ahead, we should go ahead and sing happy birthday and happy anniversary. We'll just do one right after the other. How's that? Okay. All right, here we go. out there reach out to us don't be ashamed or afraid to tell us your birthday or your anniversary because if you think I'm supposed to keep track of that you are wrong I have trouble keeping track of my own birthday and uh, anniversary so um, let us know and we will give you a shout out um, next week in the way of announcements next week we're going to go to our regular uh, 910 time of service uh, for live streaming. This week we, we stayed with the 8.30 service, uh, but we've updated our equipment and it'll get installed this week, and so we will uh, uh, be able to do that next week, hopefully uh, in a smooth fashion. We'll see how that works out. Uh, but uh, join us at 9.10 next Sunday for our uh, morning worship service live streamed on Facebook and it's still being recorded so uh, those of you who need DVD or uh, watch it on television it'll still be on those media forms as well. Uh, any other announcements need to make? Alright. Let's prepare our hearts for what God has for us today.
chosen to join us either via live stream or later on via Facebook or television. It is a good day to be um, a Christian. From Isaiah 12, 4 through 6. <clears throat> In that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name and make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Through eight. Find rest, O oh my soul, 
in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge.
website and you can go there and you can give online and secure and, uh, and it's easy you can even put that app on your phone download it on your phone and uh, uh, you can uh, put the app on and then put in all me uh, and, uh, and and you'll be good to go but uh, you can give online now and it's a great app several have used it and, uh, and so we encourage you to continue to support the ministry of the church because uh, as was, has been stated several times, the expenses of the, of the ministry and of the church continue. Uh, those don't get suspended due to the crisis. Uh, they continue on. And so uh, we want to uh, continue to be able to uh, minister uh, and, and be uh, effective in the days ahead when we can come together we don't want to miss a step in our ministry uh, efforts so thank you for that keep those things in mind
this time, just want to uh, offer up a pastoral prayer and uh, just a few uh, requests that have been brought to my attention. Of course, you probably saw on uh, the announcement this morning on the prayer chain text, uh, Verna Jervis would be going in tomorrow into the nursing home for rehab uh, for several weeks anyway. Uh, so uh, keep her in your prayers. And also Karen Joka uh, broke her arm last Sunday. So uh, keep her in your prayers. Um, and uh, just continue to pray for one another. Uh, as I go through the week, I get a lot of text. Uh, a few calls, but mostly text now. And uh, personal messages on Facebook. It's funny how Facebook has become the primary medium in which everybody uh, communicates, but uh, a lot of folks are really struggling with the isolation now, and so uh, continue to pray for one another, and I encourage you to reach out to uh, one another, either through text or through Facebook, or, you know, there's an old-fashioned concept of calling people on the phone and, and talking to them. Uh, there's even an older concept, of, and I love this one, of s dropping a little card or a note in the mail. Uh, when people send me uh, those kind of things, and not just with their name signed on it, but if they have a sentiment in it, uh, I can save those. I have a box. Uh, those who moved me a few weeks ago uh, into our new home know that there is a, uh, a box uh, that uh, is called my encouragement file and it's a banker's box I've actually gone through about two or three of them over the course of my ministry and I just throw those in there and when I have days when I'm down I'll open up that encouragement file and I'll just go through things and I've seen uh, uh, cards and letters and things that people have jotted down I had one person uh, draw me a picture on a napkin and uh, as I was preaching, and it was a teenage teenager, drew me a picture on a napkin, and it was he was an artist, and it was the face of Christ with the crown of thorns, and I kept that. You know, those kind of things are encouraging, especially when we're going through the days like we're going through. And so I encourage you to practice not just some of the new forms of reaching out to people, but it's okay to resurrect some of those old ways of uh, touching base with folks too. Uh, I would say stop by their house and visit, but you can't do that anymore. But you could drive by and wave, honk and wave. That, that's a good way of doing that too. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer though. Yes? You have a joy. Share with us a joy. I'm sorry. Uh, no way. Dawn Head's going to be a grandma. And Donnie's going to be a grandpa. You're not going to be a grandma, Donnie. You're going to be a grandpa. How fun is that going to be? Jeremy and Cassidy. Jeremy and Cassidy are expecting their their first child. How fun will that be? So you can just talk to all the other grandparents in the room. Your life's going to change. Yeah. This is the opportunity for revenge. <laughs> the ladies are getting blessed. We better pray. <laughs> Any other joys or concerns? All right. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Father, it is a joy to just be in your presence. Even though uh, we are doing church differently these days, days. Once when these pews were packed with people and there was an excitement, an electricity in the air because we all came together to worship you. Lord, I still sense that excitement and electricity. Maybe not to the same level, but Lord, there are many that are watching, that are still as excited. They're home right now in their living room and they sense your holy presence. 
Lord, I pray and ask that you would just uh, you would just help us to continue to walk and to live in your presence each and every day. And Lord, keep us mindful of one another. That we would continue to lift one another in prayer. Even though this isolation seems to have removed us from being able to gather together, it cannot take away our fellowship that we have as your children. There is still a spiritual fellowship that takes place. And Lord, when those folks come to mind as we go throughout our week, Lord, help us to be faithful, to respond and to reach out to them. And just to let them know that we love them and we're thinking about them. All it takes to encourage somebody is a brief text or a phone call or a card saying, you know, I was thinking about you. Your face came into my mind. And I was thinking about you. And I just want to know how you're doing. And I just want you to know that I look forward to the day when we're able to once again embrace one another in fellowship. Lord, you are our hope. Our hope isn't in the medical community or in the scientific community. Our hope is in you. Because what medicine and science haven't been able to discover, you already know. What cures they're able to come up with pale in the light of your healing power and your saving grace. And so, Lord, we just pray and ask that you would help us to keep our eyes focused and fixed on you. That we would not lose heart. That we would not allow fear to rule and reign in our life. But that we would allow your hope to spring forth. And that we would be an encouragement to those around us. And these days, it may only venture to our own family but that's okay. I just pray and ask that you would help us to be an encouragement and to let those, whether it's through some form of social media or whether it is through texting or phone, just to let others know that there is hope and it is in you, Christ Jesus. And we just thank you for the joys. We thank you for uh, Jeremy and Cassidy and they're going to be parents and their lives are never going to be the same. And they'll figure that out pretty quick. And for Don and Donnie. And uh, we just are excited and, and celebrate with them. Lord, we, we ask you to be with uh, Karen and she's uh, healing with a broken arm. Be with Verna as uh, she is struggling with a uh, broken arm as well and, and going to rehab. Lord, we pray and ask that you would just minister to them. And there are many others who struggle. We, uh, we just ask that you would uh, continue to minister to them. And Lord, as they pray right now in their home, we ask that you would hear. And your word says that you not only hear our prayers, but that you answer. And so... We will allow you to handle it, to take care of all of the needs according to your riches and glory, Paul writes. And Lord, we are going to ask that you would just do it in such a way that our faith is increased and honor and glory is brought to your holy name. We ask now that you be with us throughout the rest of the service. Draw us near to you through your word. Open up our hearts and our minds to the truth. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with your church throughout the world today. That you would 
encourage every believer and that we as a church would continue to look up not only to you for hope but to you for deliverance Lord we are excited about the day when you return to take your bride to yourself and Lord we just pray and ask that that day would be soon now we ask that you would just uh, be with us as we go throughout the rest of our week. Lord, use us in ways that uh, will bring honor and glory to you. And we thank you for the privilege of life and the gift of life everlasting. Now we ask that you would keep us mindful to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You'll stand please now in reverence to God's word. <clears throat> this is from Matthew 28, verses 9 and 10, and then 16 to 20. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by, their feet, by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. wanted to follow up on the Easter message. Uh, next week I'll probably uh, uh, begin a, another series, but uh, uh, I wanted to follow up on the Easter message because I'm always kind of intrigued by uh, all of uh, the dynamics that... that uh, play out in this drama. And so last week we looked at uh, uh, we looked at Good Friday and we looked at the crucifixion of Christ and then on Sunday we celebrated uh, at a, at a drive-in sunrise service uh, uh, and, and then on our, our uh, morning worship service we celebrated the resurrection of Christ and, and just how thrilling that is. Uh, I, as I was thinking this week you know, just I always reflect a little bit. It starts Sunday after uh, I step out of the pulpit. I begin to rethink and to uh, reflect on on not only my message but uh, on uh, the extenuating uh, part of the message that continues on. How do we how do we continue on with this and so now we look at, I want to just back up briefly and, and go back to uh, when Christ rose from the grave, rose from the dead, conquered the grave, overcame death, and in verse 9, as, as Brenda read, uh, uh, these gals, these women who came to the, to the tomb, and as we learned last week, they came to care for the body of Christ because he was buried hastily uh, because the Sabbath was upon them. And, uh, and so they buried him hastily in uh, Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. Uh, and so they come back and they encounter Jesus. And last week we looked at Mark's uh, account. This week we're looking at Matthew's. And I want to look at that because... Uh, there are some dynamics that are going on there. In both situations, and in fact in all situations, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is the women that are there, and they are told to go and tell the disciples. And so uh, that is what the angel commanded them to do, and they 
uh, in verse 8, so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran to bring his disciples' word. And then in verse 9, it says, as they went. So they're run, uh, just imagine this. They're running down this path. They're excited. That it says that this excitement is mixed with both joy and fear. Have you ever had both of those together? Joy and fear? I think we probably all have had those moments. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think of, uh, go back since uh, Dawn mentioned that uh, she's going to be a grandma, uh, uh, you begin to reflect back as you have uh, grandchildren, then you begin to reflect back to when you had your children. Uh, because sometimes, it doesn't matter how long you've been a grandparent, uh, sometimes it is hard to believe when you look at your kids that they have kids. Because it wasn't too long ago in our minds that those kids were uh, still rolling their eyes when you told them to go and pick up their bedroom. Now those same kids that rolled their eyes when you asked them to pick up their toys are now having eyes rolled at them because they're telling their kids to pick up their toys. But I go back to when... Uh, my wife, Dawn, was pregnant for our children, and there was joy in that moment when she was like, it's time. And there was fear. Did anybody else experience that? Because this was back in, the only child that we knew what the gender was, was uh, Jennifer. Uh, Dawn wanted to know. The other, the other three, Katie, Amanda, and Ryan, we said, oh, let's just be surprised ourselves. And, uh, and so, but Jennifer, we wanted to know. And so uh, I can remember uh, going to the uh, hospital. Uh, we, I was pastoring in Michigan, and we went to the hospital, and, uh, and it was uh, late in the evening, late night, into the early morning hours. And uh, this, this pregnancy was different. This was our fourth child, and the pregnancy was different. And there was joy, but there was excitement. There, uh, there, there were, seemed to be some complications that had set in um, just in the, at the point of delivery. And so while I was able to be with my wife during the delivery of our first three kids, uh, they said no, and they pushed me out of the room, and so I waited outside uh, while Jennifer <coughs> came into the world. And uh, I can remember pacing. You think that that just is in the movies, and it's not, because now the excitement, you know, all the other times I was right there, and it was just excitement. There wasn't really, I mean, there was some fear, you know, you hope they come out right, and, you know, uh, everything, they got all their nose and ears is on the right spot. Uh, but this was different. I couldn't be in there. And so there was fear and joy at the same time. And, uh, and so I kind of understand as these gals are running down the path, there's a lot of unknown and unanswered questions that they have running through their mind. And there is joy because they've just encountered an angel of the Lord. He has just told them that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and just as he said. And so now they're running down this pathway. I'm going to assume that it is a pathway. Uh, they're running down there and they encounter Jesus himself. And it says that Jesus met them saying, Re and it's with excellent, rejoice! In the midst of fear, in the midst of unanswered questions, in the midst of unknown futures, even today for us, listen, there is reason to rejoice. 
Because Jesus is here. He's in your life. All you have to do is open up your eyes, open up your heart, and encounter Him. Just as these women did. And so He says, rejoice. And so they came and they held Him by the feet and they worshipped Him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Now, they, they have fear and joy and Jesus says, do not be afraid. Let go of the fear. Focus on the joy. You know, I've found, especially in these last several weeks, going to be maybe going on a month and a half, maybe two. The whole emphasis of this whole crisis has been the fear. Even within the church, the emphasis has been on the fear. What happened to the joy part of it? We sang a song this morning. I was thinking about this. It popped into my mind when we sang that first song. We've been through fire. As, a, as the church, as the bride of Jesus Christ, we've been through fire. We've been through rain. We have experienced for ourselves the power of just calling upon His name. There is a great song. You guys know, everybody knows how I love Gaither music. Yeah. And uh, I come from a long line of Gaither people. If my sisters are watching, they're probably listening to Gaither music right now in the background. They'll have their own little altar call at home. I tease them because I can. Um, but there's a great song that Bill Gaither wrote a long, long time ago. And I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I can't remember all the words, but I do know this. There is a litany of, of almost poetry as Gloria Gaither um, just narrates and speaks during the song. It's called, Let the Church Be the Church. Let the people rejoice. For we've settled the question and we've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out and songs of victory. Victory. That is something that we're not hearing about. And when the coronavirus crisis has come and gone, now understand, I, I realize, as many of you do, it's never going to go away. They might develop a vaccine for it. They might uh, have a, a vaccination that you can get, just like any other flu shot. How many got their flu shot this year? I got mine. We get our flu shot, but listen, COVID-19 is not going to go away. So we have to live life in the midst of this, because it's here. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. You, I couldn't even say technological. Uh, I, I'm just a some of you watching this will say Jeff you're not even that good of a preacher uh, and, and I'm okay with that but I'll tell you what I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and I'm a believer in his word and my experience with him will trump any one of those fields of study who put out models that come back wrong my model, based on the Word of God, has never come back wrong. And I will tell you this, it doesn't matter what life throws at us, we have a Savior who isn't so transcendent 
that he doesn't know what we're going through. We have a Savior who, as we sang about last week, the very end of our service, he is a Savior who lives and he lives within our heart. He is never, he is never further away than a thought. He is never further away than me just saying his name, Jesus, and he's there instantly. And the reason I, had, I got asked this several times this week, how are you doing with this crisis? I'm doing great because I don't think about it. Because my life is not about revolving around the crisis. My life revolves around Jesus Christ. My life revolves around I'm thinking about ways I can reach out to my congregation and minister to my, to my church and to my community and to my family. That's what my life revolves around. My life revolves around thinking about the Word of God, not am I going to get the coronavirus? If I get the coronavirus, I told you, the worst case scenario, I get sick. Best case scenario, I stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, my Lord. That, let the church be the church. Let's start rejoicing. Uh, I know people say, Master Jeff, you know, you've hammered on this for several weeks. Let it go. Listen, I've got to do something because anytime you're listening to the radio, anytime you're watching the news, anytime you're on Facebook, we are getting bombarded with the fear factor. And it is time to battle the fear that the devil is throwing out. And it's time to focus on the joy that Jesus brings. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so these ladies are there and, and they Jesus says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Now before they had, it says that they were afraid. They, were, they had fear and great joy. Jesus says, get rid of the fear. Do not be afraid. Focus on the joy. Go and tell my brothers. Now, look at... He doesn't say, go and tell my disciples. He says, go and tell my brother. Go and tell my brothers. To go to Galilee. And there they will see me. And then over in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. To the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Well, what do you do when you see the resurrected Jesus? What do you do today when you experience the reality of Jesus Christ in your life? I'll tell you what it does naturally. When you and I experience the reality of Jesus Christ, the risen Christ, there is only one thing we can do, worship. Worship Him. I've been, uh, for those of you who may or may not know, uh, sometime in the midweek, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I sing a song on Facebook, just to try to encourage people. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, there have been times when I've done that these last few weeks. And when I get done, I experience the presence of the resurrected Christ. And I, and I, I don't do it on camera you know I I, I mean, I mean I've, I have shed my dignity in a lot of ways a lot of different times but uh, I, I, I I've shut the camera off and I've wept I told my daughter Katie I, I, we were driving uh, a few weeks ago and I said I just wept the when you encounter the presence of the resurrected Christ in your life the reality of it, of who He is and His power. Yet there's only one response that I have, and it's usually I weep. There is a sense of awe. There is joyful tears. And so the disciples, it says when they saw Him, they worshipped Him. 
Now look at what it says very the very next phrase. But some doubt. They worshipped him, but some doubted. Let me ask you this. I'm going to grab my coffee here real quick. Because you're drinking coffee at home, I know. Here's what I want to ask you. Why do we doubt the presence and the power and the reality of the resurrected Jesus Christ? Just stop and let that incubate in your mind just for a few minutes. I'm not talking about why the disciples doubted. I, I can't answer that question for them. But I do know that he, since I've been in the ministry, and I'm going on 34, almost 35 years, I have experienced worship service after worship service after worship service. I have, I have ministered with people at altars at, of prayer when they have come and, and they worship and they weep and they say, this is great. I want God to just lift this burden from me. And I'll say, He will. He will. He'll lift that burden from you. And, and as we talk and as we pray, I'll say, uh, how are you feeling? Now I just don't feel it. Well, you don't doubt. Much of the time we come and we worship and our worship is laced with doubt. Sometimes it's doubt that Jesus can really do what his word says he will do. Sometimes we doubt that. Sometimes we doubt how he feels about us. Sometimes we doubt ourselves. I'm not worthy. He can't, he can't love me because I know me. I'm not that lovable. reason I can tell you that you've experienced this because I have to. Maybe that's why the disciples doubted. Every one of them had abandoned Christ in their own way. It wasn't just Judas who betrayed Christ. Maybe some of the doubt was about how he really felt toward them. Let me ask you this once again. Do you doubt God's love for you? Do you doubt the willingness of Christ to die on your cross? To take God's wrath upon Himself do you doubt that He could love you that much? We're not worthy of that. I'm not. But I'll tell you what. My unworthiness does not exceed His love and grace. Neither does yours. Did you catch that? Our unworthiness is not greater than His love and His grace that He bestows toward us. That's awesome. The love of God. It's greater far than the human tongue can ever tell. The grace of Jesus Christ is so wonderful. We're going to sing about it here in just a second. But let me ask you, during this whole crisis, have you been more focused on the fear 
And have you let the joy take a back seat? Have you let the joy of the Lord take a back seat? And have you allowed fear to drive the vehicle that's your life? I tell you what, let go of the fear. Do not be afraid. I'm not telling you not to be safe. I'm not telling you to go out and do something idiotic. What I'm telling you is don't be driven by the vehicle of fear. Allow the joy of the Lord to take you to new heights in your walk with Him. In a crisis, we are the bride of Christ. He is not going to let his bride. He is not going to let his bride be blemished by what the world has to offer. Rise above that. He ends, even in the midst of, of their doubt, verse 17, and when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. And Jesus came and he spoke to them saying, now even in the midst of their doubt, he came to them and he said, all authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. Now, listen real close to this church. <laughs> All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen and amen. And I'll tell you... Just think about it this way. He says, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. And then he turns. He doesn't say, so I'm giving it to you. That is assumed. The authority of the Father is passed to the children. Yesterday, my uh, son-in-law, he was helping me work on the house. My son's done the same thing. I've done the same thing. And all my kids. Back then, it, some of you are going to say, boy, Jeff, are you a dummy. But I'll tell you what happened. Let me take a quick drink. Ah, that's good. We needed something for the house. And I pull out my wallet. I give him that. I say, go get it. I've done that with my kids. When they go and they use this, they're going with the authority that I have. Do you understand that? They represent me. And that's kind of the way it is with Jesus right here in this passage. All authority is given to Him in heaven and earth. And it's almost as though he gives us a spiritual credit card and he says, now, here, go, make disciples. He's given them a shopping list, if you will. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So go and make disciples, baptize them. And the third thing is teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Everything that I have, all the authority that God the Father has given me, 
I have. I am giving you that authority to go and to do this in the name, my name, in the Father's name, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I want you to go and do these things with the authority that I have from heaven and earth. And what have we done? What has the church done? I want to challenge you today. The call upon our life as the bride of Christ has a singular focus. Now, you can do a lot of different things, but the main point always has to be the main point, and that is to bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If the church isn't doing that, it ain't the church. It might have a church name on it. But if the church is not bringing people to the saving knowledge and the transforming power of the reality of the risen Christ, then the church is not being the church. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I want to be the church. Now I'll tell you what, if you're watching this today, whether it's on Facebook or television or, or on the computer, I just want to tell you something. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you need to make that decision today. It's the most important relationship you'll ever make. If it's the most important decision you'll ever make, it's the most important relationship you'll ever have. More important than the relationship that you have with your spouse, with your parents, with your family, with your siblings. It is the most important relationship you will ever have in your whole life. And I'll tell you what, if you make that decision today, all you have to do <coughs> is pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. I realize that it was my cross that you died on. Lord, you took God's wrath for sin. You took that for my, for me. For, you took that in my place. And right now, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin and I ask you to come into my heart and transform me, change me into what you would have me to be. Help me to be your disciple today. Amen. You've done that. If you've prayed that prayer, you let me know. Email me. Personal message me on Facebook. You write me a letter. I'll send you a new pocket testament for new believers. I have a box full of them, and I'm eager to give them away. I want to send you one. You send me your name and address, I'll send you one. No charge. And you're not going to have to pay postage and handling. That's all on me. There's not going to be an administrative fee. There's not going to be a form that will get you on a mailing list. It is just free so that you can have the New Testament, the Word of God in your hand to help you start on this most important relationship and build it so that it is stronger than ever. And I'll tell you what, you focus on that relationship with Jesus Christ and your relationship with your spouse will be better. Relationship with your parents will be better. Relationship between your siblings will be better. Will it be easier? No. Will they be better? Yes. And I, I invite you to reach out to me. You can email me, redneckpreacher2017 at gmail.com. Now that's going out to the whole wide world. We're going to sing a song, one of my favorites. Uh, Wonderful grace of Jesus that we just uh, just talked about a few minutes ago. Wonderful grace of Jesus is greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden and setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Stand with me, those of you that are here. And we have a great team that helped make this broadcast happen. Uh, one of these Sundays, I'm going to give you their name, and you can uh, you can pour out your appreciation on them, because I sure, certainly appreciate them and uh, love what they do and their willingness to come out and help us out. 
But let's sing this together. Sing it with some gusto. And if you're at home, the words are on the screen. Sing it. Sing it with gusto. Like you believe it. said amen and if you're at home say amen give each other high fives if you're the family members uh if, if you're all by yourself and you have a pet pet the dog do something but uh share it be excited and uh and i'm so thankful for the wonderful grace of jesus and i love those those uh words and uh the verses and uh, i encourage you this week to live in the joy and let the fear go along the wayside. Lord bless you and keep you. His peace be upon you. 
And may the joy of the Lord be your strength as you go through this week. We'll see you again next week. And it'll be at 9.10 next week. Our regular worship time. And so until then, God bless you.